Hey guys, it's Riley at Riley Stuff It over on Instagram and Poshmark. And today we are going to the brand new Goodwill outlet in Romeo, Romeoville, Illinois. I just shipped my packages and I only have a couple hours. So this location is a bunch of people are walking by the post office looking at me. Okay, this location is like 40 minutes from me, which is 20 minutes closer than the one up in Wisconsin. I hope it's really good. It is literally the grand opening first day. I was gonna go at 9 a.m., but I'm a responsible reseller who had other reselling tasks to do. So I didn't prioritize shopping today. Also, like, I don't, I don't know how it's gonna be grand opening. We'll see. So I will check in with you guys when we get there. I'm confused because my maps took me to a regular Goodwill store, so now I have to do some research. I'm 17 minutes away. I guess it's because Google gave me this Romeoville address instead of... I should have double checked. It's my fault. It's my fault. But now I have less time to shop because I have to be back at my house in like 2 hours and 15 minutes, so that gives me like an hour to shop. <laughs> so time to spend 17 more minutes in the car. Alrighty, we made it to the correct place and I've been driving for 56 minutes, which is how long it takes me to get to Wisconsin, but I mean, I did go to the wrong place. So let's go see how this one is. And we're off to the grand opening of the Romeoville, Illinois Goodwill Outlet location. But first I had to get a thumbnail and I don't think this ended up being my thumbnail because it sucked. So over there you can see a group of people. I know it was really fast, but I walked in and they were literally like filming a news segment or something. So that was a little embarrassing. They were all watching me when I walked in. I got here like mid afternoon, I think around three o'clock and I just grabbed a cart. There was only one cart available and I started digging. So this brand, this is my very first find, B, is it B-I-N-C? Is that what the brand was? This used to be a bolo. I don't know how it does anymore, but Vin's pricing, which at this location is like $1.59 per pound, unless you get over 25, then it's $1.29, and I always do over 25 pounds. I also grab kids clothes to take to kids consignment. What is that called? Once upon a child. I average out my cost of goods, but don't include these kids clothes in my average. I could, but it's just easier to take these to kids consignment and say that's pure profit. So that was a little peek at the bins. It is a really big location, which is nice. And coming up here is a CP Shades shirt. I just saw that tag sticking out and got excited, but unfortunately it was pretty stained and worn. And so I left it behind, but it gave me hope for the day. If you've seen any of the bins content I've made before, you would know I'm not a competitive bin shopper. I like to stand back and take the leftovers, but this location, I will say, so the one up in Wisconsin, I haven't been in a good handful of months, but they, even after COVID, were still doing one per bin, but this location was not doing one per bin. When they were rolling out the new bins, it was kind of a free-for-all. These are a pair of Nike shorts. I did end up grabbing these because they were good in good condition. Normally, I would like to have a couple pair of these to lot up and sell, but I only found the one pair, so hopefully that's like a $10 to $12 sale. Really not a big profit, but after averaging out my cost of goods, everything, each individual item for the day cost me $1.06. If you're interested in seeing a haul video of this day, it will be coming soon. Here is a kid's item I found, Cat and Jack, to take to kids' consignment. I personally love Cat and Jack, Target, kids' clothes. I think they're adorable in consignment. Or Once Upon a Child, which is actually a buy-sell trade store, they do buy Cat and Jack. The reason I brought up not being a competitive person is because when I walked in, I just went to the first row of bins along the wall and started digging. I was not trying to seek out the newest bins or anything, but I did go up to the t-shirt bros, the vintage bros. You know who they are if you're a consistent bin shopper slash reseller. And I was like, hey guys, what have the rotations been like today? And they just told me they were super inconsistent. So, you know, Generally, resellers are friendly and they will share information. So if you're new to the bins, you can tell who the t-shirt bros are. And if you have any questions, just go up and ask them. And the other question I asked, I was like, hey, have they been doing one per bin? And they're like, no, it's kind of been like three or four, which I found out there was really no set amount of people. So I will say about the Goodwill outlets, including this location in my area, the Wisconsin ones I go to, the this one, anyone in the Midwest pretty much, I will say they're not crazy, mean, competitive people. In my experience, everyone's generally pretty friendly as long as you're following the rules. There was one pushy lady when I lined up for rotation, but you know, 
expected. Although I will say I've heard the Indiana bins are crazy and you know Indiana is still considered Midwest. So this is me still when I first got there digging through just old bins near the door just because it was easy you know. It's pretty big and I just walked to some of the first bins I saw and started grabbing stuff but I will tell you when I get in line up for the new rotation and I will say uh, since it's a lot of t-shirt bros what they like to do is go to the bin and just throw stuff up in the air. Big pile of stuff and so uh I would I would say it generally does not get picked over very fast because of the way they shop and okay I found this Windsor satin tank this is not a brand I pick up to sell but since it was new with tags and had good holiday colors I figured I'd grab it for buy sell trade and give it a shot there if you're wondering I do take things into Chicago I take stuff I find to Crossroads and Buffalo Exchange and exchange for in-store credit at 50% of what they price the item at and I did also grab this skirt to take to them as well. This is just a no-name, I'm assuming online boutique brand, but it's very boho, so I'm hoping one of the buy-sell trade stores I go to wants that skirt. They are pretty selective, but I will say they pay more and I have them figured out better than Plato's Closet. So I took Plato's Closet pretty much 100% out of my rotation, so that is why I'm leaving a lot of the Shein and Forever 21 stuff behind. I would have picked that up to take to Plato's Closet in the past, but since I'm not going there, Buffalo Exchange and Crossroads are a little bit higher end more expensive and they really don't pick up those brands anymore one thing i will say about this first day grand opening they pretty much only had bins full of textiles there were no shoes that i saw that doesn't mean they weren't rotated earlier in the day but there were no shoes that i saw and no hard goods there were some book bins though i did grab that cat and jack tank for kids buy sell trade and I always check over to make sure there are no stains like to take something to kids buy sell trade it has to be in almost 100% immaculate condition they pass on even the perfect condition stuff I take them so I just have a, a couple bins full of kids clothes and just keep taking it back to them over and over again until they buy stuff I know we have not seen a lot of stuff for me to resell myself yet but here is one piece I did find it is Gilly Hicks which is an Abercrombie Hollister family brand and I have no experience selling it this is just a lace bodysuit and I figured I would give it a try I don't expect more than like $13 for this but at bins pricing I mean it's so lightweight it helps bring down my cost of goods so I figured I would still make a profit and hopefully it sells eventually. So as I said, we're not seeing like a whole lot of awesome stuff for me to sell, but I mean, that's an average binge trip for me. I will say I get like probably 60% of stuff to sell myself and 40% of stuff I do other things with, which is adult mature consignment, more trendy teen, not even teen, young adult, like Buffalo Exchange Crossroads. I take stuff to kids consignment. So, and I mean, I grab stuff for myself sometimes too. I will say one thing I noticed about this new location is it does not seem like there's a whole lot of parking. And I don't know if that's going to change. It seemed like there was an area where there could be a lot of parking spaces, but it didn't look like parking spaces. It looked like I don't know, like a driveway for trucks to come in. So hopefully this is not an issue for the future. Also, I'm pretty sure I said when I walked in, I got the last cart. Coming up here is a pair of Lane Bryant pants and Lane Bryant is a plus size woman's brand. That is an older tag and I looked at them and they were like terry cloth Bermuda shorts and maybe I should have grabbed them but Lane Bryant just does not sell for me. Tell me would you have picked those up for a dollar and sixty cents? One thing I did really like about this Romeoville location is right in front of where I'm shopping there's a line of long bright big windows and so it's just great at the bins to have some natural lighting and while there is some up at the bins I go to in Racine it's not awful like dark warehouse it is pretty dark so it's awesome to have these windows up here is a cash chic thong and actually from the brand I was just talking about Lane Bryant I believe I'm 90% sure that's their Intamins line and so that was a new with tags g-string and I was like hey it's gonna cost me like two pennies I'm sure I can get money for this 
Here is a Parker dress and Parker is the bane of my existence because this dress probably retailed for like $325 but I can't sell it for more than $15. This one was stained and I think yeah at the bottom it had some more flaws so I left it behind. Here they are rotating new bins and there's all the people who lined up and I liked I think I said earlier it was not one per bin. Oh I grabbed this Torrid dress and this wasn't actually in a new rotation. I grabbed it while I was walking over to the new rotation and I was happy to score that in a picked over bin. So I did line up for that rotation, which I showed you guys, and I grabbed a few things out of there, but I prefer to wait until all the t-shirt people go away, because I mean, they're usually done in under 10 minutes once they don't find anything vintage, and that's when I move in and scoop up my mall brands and hopefully a few higher end pieces. So when COVID happened, the Racine Wisconsin bins moved to one person per bin for a new rotation. So lining up was super competitive people would line up like 30 minutes in advance to be the first one in a bin and I just hated that I was ready for the craziness to start again I grabbed this new with kid new with tags kids baby gap for buy sell trade so anyway I asked the guys teacher bros while I was at the bins this day I was like hey is it only one per bin and they're like no it's a free-for-all which I'm pretty sure I said so I was very happy with that and it's very less competitive I don't have to stop shopping to line up a half hour early to wait for a shoe bin which one time I did do I waited 45 minutes so I could be the first into a shoe bin I grabbed this girl's cat and jack dress to take to once upon a child and uh, that might be a piece I have to hang on to until summer for them to grab but I'll throw it in my bin and see maybe they'll take it for winter I don't know I know some consignment stores do like or buy sell trade have like storage units and stuff that they hold on to things for the next year I don't know if mine do that I should ask them so here is the rotation after 10-15 minutes it is empty it looks like all the other bins but it would take me probably an hour and a half to go through the four bins they rotated so I know not everybody there was that one person who had looked at every single item in those bins and I still found some gems in these bins they are yet to come but one is coming right here I found this dress from the brand Effie's Heart and it is a mod cloth brand i was super excited to see that tag i don't know if it's only sold at moth mod cloth but they do like novelty print retro style dresses this one was just floral but it was a 2x so i was stoked to find that hopefully it will sell over 30 dollars Guys, this clip was not planned. I genuinely set my phone down and started digging and just found this item as I started recording. I could tell it was good quality and so I was like, okay, let's do some research. It looks like it could be Lululemon, but there's no tags. So then I decided to check the pocket and I could tell that's a Lululemon tag. It even is a newer piece because it has the style number. So then I went on the hunt for the logo just to triple check because even though I knew I found the size dot which is the hard part <laughs> usually I could not find the logo and eventually I found it oh there I was I was checking the zippers because Lululemon will often brand the zippers with the logo and so I was actually doubting myself there I was like is this actually authentic because the zippers aren't branded but you could see it I had before me there it is Lululemon logo I actually just photographed this item an hour ago so hopefully it gets posted in the next day or two and uh totally opposite of <laughs> Lululemon I found this kid's little sweater onesie to take to once upon a child. I would love to know your opinion on these thrift with me at the bins videos. Do you guys prefer clips like this where you can see me shopping and I show you guys what I'm finding or do you prefer the clips where you don't see me you see into the bin and me shopping as I'm pulling things out. Those are genuinely a little bit harder to get because I like to use both hands to move stuff around as you can see so those are harder for me to get but I don't know those feel almost like more authentic than me just showing you things that is I'm always so bummed when I find Gap because I it feels such good quality but it doesn't really sell so I'm pretty selective with Gap this was a wild fable sweater vest and I actually did throw this into my cart to take to Buffalo Exchange and Crossroads but then I took it out just because they're weird with Target brands it was trendy they probably would have grabbed it but I didn't want to be stuck with it so I barely skimmed the surface of this bin before I moved on to the next one and I'm glad I did because I found a lot of stuff in like a teeny tiny corner of the next bin that well you guys will see the footage as soon as it changes and so I found a few good pieces in that bin and then I walked away and decided to go to a different bin because I was just feeling all over the place here's the bin I'm talking about and so I found a few good things and then like 10 minutes later they did a rotation for this bin so I wish I had spent more time in there since I was finding 
some okay bread and butter stuff. One thing that really irks me about people who hate resellers is they act like we take everything and there's nothing left for anybody else. And the truth is I pulled a few things out of one tiny corner of a bin and before I could spend 45 minutes to go through every single item in that bin, they rotated it away and that stuff is just gone forever and I'm sure there are items in there that I could have resold and even on top of that items that I don't want to resell that are still usable like of course if you're watching this you're likely a reseller and you know this but it's like how <laughs> ignorant these people are to how much stuff there really is. I was excited to see the logo for this brand Hardtail but these pants were stained so I had to leave them behind. I've sold it a few times and it is definitely a brand I would pick up in the bins but I would check comps if you're paying more than bins pricing for. Coming up here is an American Eagle sweater. I don't love selling American Eagle. It's just not a brand that does super well for me but this had some light flaws on it so I don't think buy sell trade would buy it. I did actually give it a quick uh, depilling but it's an XXL so hopefully I can get like 13 14 dollars for it I'd love to know if American Eagle is a bread and butter brand for you how do you get it to sell what sells from the brand I know their jeans can do okay but even then I've heard of them going downhill so I found these page jeans and they're I believe a woman's and they had that puckering on the front and back but I picked them up anyway because they were at the bins they're bins pricing and they're size 36 so I'm hoping I can get between 15 and 20 for them and I know these are not big profits but I'm really trying to you know stack up my cart so I can get weight and get that lower cost of goods. I grabbed this cute little baby onesie for buy sell trade nothing much here. Coming up here I found a girl's justice dress and actually I'm not sure if my once upon a child buys justice I should just ask them but they say they buy everything but anyway I feel like I've noticed they haven't bought justice for me from me so I picked this piece up specifically to like pay attention to be like hey do they buy justice because that's a pretty nice girl's dress. <laughs> So I grabbed this no-name blanket because I grab the blankets at the bins to take to the animal shelter I volunteer at so that way they don't get textile thrown out into another third world country. They get used by the puppies at the animal shelter who need something nice to lay on. And I consider that as not paying anything. I just calculate the weight all into my cost of goods to sell on Poshmark. Uh, here is a Pilcro anthropology piece, and this is a newer piece, I believe, because it just says Pilcro, not Pilcro on the letterpress. Unfortunately, it was super pilly, so I had to leave it behind. So I am still shopping in those four bins that were rotated, but I feel like at this point you would consider them picked over because it's been like a half hour. But guess what? I found a new FTX J Crew eyelet tank top. Very happy to find that. Don't know why anyone grabbed it, but that just goes to show. Of course, everybody is looking for different things at the bins. I pulled this dress out from the very back of a bin and I got really excited when I saw the brand. It is Nick and Zoe or Nick plus Zoe or however you say it. I say Nick and Zoe. And when I laid it out to check it over, I was like, okay, some deodorant marks, that's fine. But then I started to see more flaws. There was some staining that I just knew I couldn't get out so I had to leave that behind. I thought this was funny. There's a pair of Chico's pull-on pants at the bins and they're at the bins because Goodwill priced them too high. I can't tell you what Goodwill priced them at because the tag was on there but the zip tag was on there and they zip tied their high-end luxury items which in this case includes Chico's pants. So I'm assuming they had them priced at like $12.99. I grabbed this How Hippie Girls jumpsuit for Once Upon a Child. I didn't know How Hippie made kids clothes and um, I honestly maybe should look up to see if that has resale value but I have a feeling that's probably just sold at like TJ Maxx or something. Okay I just checked and there is no resale value on Poshmark for girls how hippie pieces so do not pick them up to resale unless you're taking them to Once Upon a Child and also with that being said I have not sold how hippie in a while but I've heard it's lost its resale value so don't pay up for it for sure check comps if you come across it. Just like the Nick and Zoe dress I was so happy when I pulled out this Hannah Anderson dress and then so sad when I realized it had staining and there was like one stain I was like okay one stain I could probably sell it but then I noticed two stains and I was like uh, two stains I think I'm gonna leave it behind and maybe if they were in a different spot but one of the stains was like right on the bust I did however find these old navy leggings girls leggings for once upon a child 
and I have so many kids clothes I need to make my way over to Once Upon a Child real soon. Coming up here is a plus size NSR top and NSR is a Nordstrom house brand I believe. If it's not a house brand it is sold at Nordstrom. It is like a lower tier line. I'd say this probably retailed for $65 and was probably sold at Nordstrom Rack but it was plus size 2x so now I'm kind of regretting not picking it up especially since it was all over lace. I feel like it would have been a good holiday top but I have been burned by NSR in the past. This was a really cute loft hummingbird print cardigan but it was stained so I passed on that. That. There they are rotating out bins and that is the last rotation I was there for. I left around five. I don't know if they did any rotations after that but I will say up in Wisconsin those bins tend to stop rotating I think around five o'clock. I did find these men's Cole Han zero grand shoes and I would have loved to pick these up but they were missing one of the laces and I know it would have been super easy to replace but I have shoes I need to replace the laces on and have never seemed to got around gotten around to. So I left those behind for maybe someone else to grab. But as I said, there were no shoe bins. Those just happened to be mixed in with this clothing bin. And if you noticed, they were zip tied. They were at the Goodwill outlet because Goodwill priced them too high and they were missing a lace and they had flaws. So they didn't sell. I would like to say sorry if you hear some banging in the background. My neighbor is getting construction work done on their house and I would like to have this video posted for you today. So I'm trying to do everything. I found these men's North Face snow pants and I was very happy to find those. I don't know whether people passed on them because of weight or they were dirty but it was like literally surface dirt. I came right off of the wet cloth so very happy to score those. So at this point they had rotated out those new bins but I didn't line up and I didn't feel like trying to squeeze my way in there after everyone else had lined up so I was just chilling looking through some old bins waiting until it cleared out to go over there and I found this awesome crocheted blanket and I think those are supposed to be bunnies but they also kind of look like cats. I didn't look up to see if it has resale value, but I just grabbed it because I was like, I'll keep it for myself. I can't let this go to the landfill. It's in pristine condition. So I might actually look up to see. I'm sure I can get at least 20, but for 20, I think I might actually want it in my house. Here is a maternity brand I've had luck selling in the past. It is called Kindred Bravely, and guys, the banging is getting louder. I'm sorry. Um, I thought this was a tunic at first, but I believe it's actually a nursing dress, so hopefully that will go for over 25. Someone was very thoughtful and tied all their used underwear together so you can have all their used underwear in one bunch. I seriously, I don't understand what goes through people's head when they donate clothing. Your used underwear are trash unless you're selling them on the internet to someone on OnlyFans. And my last find of the day was in a corner of a bin right next to the checkout line. So I don't know if it was someone's throwback or if again it was just a good item that sunk to the bottom of a bin. And is this Eileen Fisher silk blouse. Now my biggest complaint about these bins is this scale right here. You can't roll your cart on a scale. You need to pick everything up and put it on this blue scale. It is the most inconvenient thing in the entire world. All right guys, here's the damage for like under two hours. Pretty good. I paid like $78. I think I got the discount for over 25 so it was $1.29 per pound which is the same as up in Wisconsin. Now I'm gonna go stick my cart back. My phone's being weird. I stayed longer than expected, no surprise, so I'll update you when I get home. We're back! I was being crazy. Uh, okay, so here is everything, and let me flip you around so I can talk to you. Okay, sorry about the terrible lighting, but you know, we're in fall, and uh, it's dark at 6 o'clock, so... First impressions were good. If you've ever been to the Racine Goodwill outlet in Wisconsin, Inventory wise, it was really comparable. I will say this day did seem like less Goodwill reject or not rejects, Goodwill shelf pulls. It was a lot of untagged stuff. And, but I'm pretty happy with my haul and I was only there for a couple hours. I will totally go back. It is much, well, I don't want to say like much closer. It feels much closer. It's about 20 minutes closer, which is a 40 minute off my commute to the bins total. So that's great. I will be going back. I have a lot of inventory right now. I didn't need to go today at all, but I just wanted to get there at the grand opening, see how things were so I can say I was there on the first day. 
if you're nearby I totally recommend checking it out it was pretty big i will say i'm sure i said this in the video there were new no shoe bins so i don't know if that's gonna change but there were books also no hard good bins i'm going to film a haul video for this but it's gonna be separate this is just a thrift with me so stay tuned for the haul and i will see you guys in another video soon goodbye